Hey, so we're back with Eleanor, and Eleanor is one of our graduates from the law degree, and we're talking about Eleanor's amazing journey from her degree program through to her master's study now. So we've talked about um, what you're studying, why you're studying it, the kind of what experience that you've had. I think um, I'm talking a little bit about living in London. To, uh, to round off living in London, what you've talked about so far is being a well-being rep, living in halls and making that decision to do that, and also building a community through uh, networking with your peers. With living in London, how do you actually find the lifestyle, which is commuting, uh, being in a city, can it be overwhelming and how do you deal with that if it isn't, can be overwhelming? I think it's definitely overwhelming, but it's so exciting at the start. Right. It's really easy to become overwhelmed really quickly right. because you see this opportunity, you see this talk, you see this, that and the other. For example, last week was London Craft Week. So there's loads of events going on and I was trying to go to as much as possible just to have the experience. But if I don't finish work or uni until six o'clock, you then have to commute back into Central or you have to commute somewhere else. So it's maybe 30, 40 minutes again mm. on the train. Then you go into this event and you don't get back and then you're eating at 11 o'clock at night and then you had to get up and start your day again. So it's really easy to be super, super busy. Um, I'm quite lucky because my boyfriend lives just outside London, so that's a really nice break for me at the weekends to escape the pollution and busyness mm -hmm. and just have a relaxing weekend and put my head down and get some work done, some uni work done. Yeah, so finding life balance mm -hmm. in anything you do is important, but if you're gonna go to a city, it, there are really great positives. You just got to look after yourself, and you know, and find find ways to do that. I think is is what you say. What's been the best or most standout experience for you so far? So I think it was probably a month ago during Fashion Revolution Week. Right. So Fashion Revolution was started um six years ago, following as I said earlier the Rana Plaza disaster. Right. Um, which killed a hundred and. 1,138 garment workers in Bangladesh. Wow. Obviously, it was a completely tragic incident. Um, and the fashion industry needs to learn from that and make substantial changes to make sure nothing like that ever happens mm. again. Um, so Fashion Revolution run loads of events across the city, and it obviously um, coincided with Extinction Rebellion, where they had the pink boat in the middle of Oxford Circus, of course, and there was yeah. loads of protests going on. I feel like that was a really brilliant week as lots of events were going on. We had a catwalk, a sustainable catwalk down the middle of Oxford Circus by the pink boat and all the traffic was completely closed off and there was in the papers about how much money Topshop and all the other big brands on Oxford Street were losing just from having no traffic going past them. Right. And I think just having something that I'm so passionate about, sustainable fashion, come to the forefront of other people's lives, people who have nothing to do with fashion. I mean, everybody has something to do with fashion mm. because everybody wears clothes, but um, essentially people who have little to no interest in it. So it's kind of where your worlds are conversing, where you're talking about business, you're talking about fashion, you're talking about creative people, but you're also talking about uh, politics and social um, advocacy, social change, but you're also talking about the law. So there's so many forums that are coming together. Do you think that's why that stands out to you as such a prominent experience? Because it was of such importance. Did you feel like you were really part of something bigger than yourself? Yeah, definitely. I felt like so many people were involved, even if they didn't want to be. <laughs> yeah. So, for example, people just getting off the tube with their head down, thinking they're going to go to work really quietly. And there's people shouting about fashion, and yeah. there's loads of noise. And I think just people making noise about something I'm really passionate about and kind of sharing their stories was really, really impactful. Yeah. What's been the worst experience for you so far? Oh, that's a really difficult one. Yeah. I think in January, I really struggled to find the balance right. with everything. So for example, it was a week before the Richard Quinn fashion show and I was getting there for 8.30 in the morning and leaving on the last train of the evening at 11.30, mm. 8pm. And I also had to try and pass my assignments. Mm. So finding the balance, because one of the problems, not problems, one of the things that you have to accept when you're at uni is that if you work a nine to five job, you can go home and you can relax and you can switch your brain off, hopefully, and not think about work till the next day. Whereas if you're doing that and you, you're doing an MA or any kind of education, you can never switch your mind off. Mm. 
So I think I got quite run down and ha wasn't really exercising properly, but was eating so badly. I was all about caffeine and sugar and that was about it. Right. And I think just being really run down, my brain doesn't work like it should do. Um, I was quite down because I was trying to balance everything. And there's no way that you can balance both of those important things and do well at both of them. Mm. You might just be able to turn up on time for both, but you can't be productive and you can't be efficient or effective. So how did you get out of it? How did you kind of support yourself? So um, I had a few days off the internship to right. finish all of my assignments and get that done. Then I went back, got through to the show. Then I slept for three days. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's about peaks and troughs, isn't it? I think uh, everybody, you know, whether you're working or studying, you know, most roles come, most roles of importance, you know, where you're really passionate about what you're doing, there's going to be times of high intensity. Mm -hmm. So would you do anything differently when that comes up again? Because working in your industry, it's going to Yeah, gonna I would again. really love if fashion-focused unis would not put their deadlines near fashion week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously I can't change that on a sure. university-wide scale. Um, so I think it's knowing boundaries. I was so, so keen to impress at, right. with my internship. All I wanted to do was really, really show them my best ability constantly. And I was really wary of asking for any time off or anything mm. like that. But I think now I've realised, now I've ex put that to the extreme... Yeah that they have to realise that you're human and they can't dislike you for that. And at the time I thought, oh my gosh, if I ask to leave early, they're not going to want me back the next day or anything like that. And I think just knowing boundaries and being putting your foot down and saying, I'm actually doing an MA alongside this. Yeah. Or actually, I'm a human and I need to eat. Or I need to go home. Yes. Or I haven't spoken to my boyfriend for two weeks because yeah. <laughs> I've literally just been trying to balance everything else. I'm a human, I need to do something else in my life. And obviously that's really difficult with the two weeks leading up to fashion week, but I think from now on, I will definitely make sure I go in there and I kind of, I'm more confident in myself and make sure I'm getting what I yeah. want out of it. And setting some boundaries mm -hmm. is key for anything that you're doing, but particularly when you're studying and you're finding your way in a big city and on a, you know, studying at master's level, just being able to set some boundaries. That's really good advice. Thank you for sharing that because not everybody would all, always say, I can't cope. I think the more mm -hmm. of us that do it, the better. Um, and yeah, being strong and, you know, if you do a good job, people know that if you ask for a little bit of time off, mm -hmm. that it's not because you're lazy or anything. So I think that's a really good message. Okay, so actually putting that in um, some context, let's rewind three years, because you're saying all these things now about mm -hmm. being conscientious, about wanting to work hard. This is the person I remember from uni, which is, Emily, I'm the rep for this. I'm the rep for this. I'm working with the University of Law. I'm also on the society. Um, you know, I'm also kind of doing these social things. I'm studying really hard. I've got all these interests. So I remember you as being really kind of dynamic and ambitious and seeing the value in things. Um, what do you think you did in your university experience that allowed you to kind of hit the ground running in your MA to know that you need to put the extra in because what you're doing in your masters isn't uncommon for the attitude that you need at undergraduate level. So what what kinds of things did you do on your undergraduate that's built in this work ethic in you? I think I came to Plymouth. I don't really know what I was expecting from my university experience because right. I wanted to be a dentist. Right. This is totally expected. <laughs> so I wanted to be a dentist and I didn't get in. So I came to Plymouth through clearing to do law, which is a completely random change of career. You know I kind of like those. We've gone from dentistry to law to fashion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. all kind of linked. Um, so yeah, I think starting afresh with a completely new... Like, I knew nothing about law when I came here. I didn't... I don't even know why I chose law. I just did. And I, I came in, and from the word go, um, Kim Stevenson took us for our first lecture, and I thought, oh, God, I so need to be a solicitor now. Right. I was really inspired to, like, do something big and make a big change. Um, but I think it wasn't until, kind of, the end of first year where I really kind of found my groove with everything. Because I thought, I'm really going to regret if I don't run for the Law Society for any position. I'm really going to regret it next year even though I was not somebody who stood up in front of 100 people and did a speech. Right. I was not that person at all. Like, me at 18, I was really quiet, kept my head down, played quite a lot of netball because I was into my sport. Yeah. 
But other than that, I would never answer questions in a lecture. Never. I would not be seen doing that. Right. Um, kept my head down, I was very quiet, but I thought, I'm going to have to go for this because in a year's time, I'm going to be really frustrated. So I did my speech, I read it off my piece of paper with my head down, and I somehow managed to get the role of secretary. But I think that that year, being in the in second year, really, really helped me that year in the Law mm. Society. Another thing that I did in first year was I signed up to be a rep for boohoo.com. So I essentially, it, it was kind of linked to the netball girls and the links that I had there. I handed out discount vouchers right. in fast fashion. I'd never be seen doing that now. <laughs> um, but I did. I really supported them, thought it was a brilliant job. And that really helped me speak to other people. Right. Because I really did live in my little bubble of like, I don't speak to people. I just do my own thing. I'm quite quiet and reserved. But I think definitely being secretary and being forced to speak in these meetings with 20 other people on the committee, all of whom were older than me, really kind of pushed the boat out as yeah. well. So it's not always about the what you're doing, but the what you're getting out of it, which yeah, is, definitely. I just know I need to speak to people more. Mm-hmm. Um, did you find that the more things you took on, the more you wanted to take on, like, oh, I can do that, yeah, I can do that, I've got some confidence to do that now, like, did it, did it snowball like it is for you now? Definitely, I think it opens doors, because I got the position of Law Society Secretary in maybe April of my first year. And then the following month, there was an AGM for the Fashion Society. Right. Um, the Plymouth University Fashion Society. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to roll with this, see what happens. Anyway, no one ran for president and I hadn't run for any roles. So I thought, oh, as we're having a bit of a YOLO kind of month, yeah. <laughs> why not just stand up and do that? You yeah. know, I'm interested in fashion. I've worked for Boohoo. Anyway, managed to get that role. Then I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to chair these meetings. I'm going to ha- I thought about all these consequences after. Yeah. <laughs> after, I'm going to have to chair these meetings. And I think because you've got that position, you've got the responsibility, people are looking to you to do it. You just have to get on with it and do it. Mm. And I think that's one of my approaches now. If I'm not 100% sure on something, I often get a little bit worried. If, I'm not, if I haven't done it before. Yeah. But you just have to throw yourself into it. Yeah. Chuck yourself in the deep end. I'm definitely going to throw myself in the deep end kind of person. Not walk down the steps and... Swim from the shallow end, mm-hmm. definitely throw myself in the deep end. Well, and I think to a certain extent, and of course there's different levels of risk with different opportunities, but to a certain extent you don't really know you can do something until you try it. Mm-hmm. And particularly where the universe, where you're in university and you've got secretarial positions or society positions, there's a level of comfort that you've got a student union to look after or you've got people you can go and talk to. So would you recommend that you know, would you say that if you're going to push yourself, those sorts of societies are a good way to go, or those kind of groups? I think they're completely crucial to, like, a right. university lifestyle. Yeah. Whatever you're interested in, and even if you're not interested in something, if you've never swum before but you want to be in the sailing society, just go and do it. Yeah. Just go and throw yourself into something completely different. Um, my sister started university um, in September 2018, just after I graduated, um, and I said to her, the one thing you need to do is just go and join something completely random. Just go and do it and mm. see what happens. And society-wise, that's my biggest kind of suggestion to anybody starting uni. You might have been a footballer all your life and you wanted to go and like, and you study law. Mm. You want to go and join the Marine Biology Society. Go, go and do it. There's so many options, especially mm. at Plymouth. There's so many sports and societies for anything. Mm. And there's, there's a great team of people involved behind that. And already, just joining and speaking to them, you've extan- extended your network by 10, 20 people, even for the small societies. Yeah, and I look at societies like Enactus, and there's you know people from arts and engineering and business and maths all together, and those people wouldn't normally circulate together, really, because you spend so much time with your course. So I think just getting to do that interdisciplinary networking is so important. Mm -hmm. So thinking about your time at uni, and you obviously got your law degree, now you're looking at fashion, fashion management, sustainability. How do you think your time at university ultimately has benefited your career so far? I think, first and foremost, it gave me so many people skills. Right. Even when I thought I wasn't really improving on anything. For example, in second year, you have to do a dispute resolution module where you have to do a negotiation. How many of those do I have to do on the phone every day to suppliers right. and things like that? And I never thought that this would be useful because I didn't want to be a solicitor. Mm. I thought, I'm not going to be a solicitor. Why am I doing this negotiation? And just little things like that constantly. And I think... 
the scope that you have as well with the law degree at Plymouth. So like I said earlier, you're writing an environmental law piece of course work, but you've got three or four questions to choose from about what you want to answer. And you can really narrow that down to mm. exactly what you want to do. So if you're interested in a specific area of environmental law, maybe it's like air pollution, go and write it on that. Mm. There's so much scope and I think it's really flexible your learning is. You don't yeah. just get produced with one question. Here you go, every, everybody in this class has to answer this one question. I think having kind of opportunity to, to almost make your own niche mm. by just picking the right questions is, is a really good option. I think particularly the dissertation, it's an opportunity for you to come up with something original which you can then have a new perspective to talk to an employer about regardless of the career you want. I think it's really good to look at it as that opportunity. Or even if you're in work-based learning, you might be working in a law firm or for a charity doing law, but it's the skills that it's giving you. So on that note then, if you had to give any undergraduates some um, kind of key career planning advice um, for what next and what to do to maximise that, as somebody who's been through it, uh, what, would you, what advice would you give? What main piece of advice would you give? I'd just say people, people, people. They're the people who are going to employ you. They're the people who you're going to employ. And they're the people who are interesting. And like I said earlier, you need to be interesting and interested in what people are doing mm -hmm. and interesting to other people. Whether that's you go to Cheese and Wine and speak to somebody about something that you've read that day, or maybe you're really interested in some article that's been in the news recently. Just speaking to people and putting yourself out there. Mm. Not necessarily throwing yourself in the deep end all the time. You could go to Cheese and Wine in first year and speak to one person. Mm. And you've still made a massive, a massive improvement from having not spoken to anybody. Mm. So I think taking it step by step and speaking to people. Another thing um, that I've actually learned just this weekend, not learned, but kind of come to appreciate. I went to um, the Telegraph Stella Live on Saturday, right. which is a really good experience. And I went to a talk by Joe Malone. Right, yes. Yeah. Candles. Yes, yeah. candles and perfumes. <laughs> and perfumes. So she was amazingly interesting. Not just because she spoke about how she's got this amazing nose and not really got any other senses that are great at doing anything. And she's just good at smelling things. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. But also she said, you really need to appreciate the little things. And that's something I don't think I do enough. So that's a big suggestion to people. Whether it's you've handed in something tiny, like 30% of your one unit, and you just go for a walk around the hoe of your friends, mm. around the hoe and the barbican, like appreciate something. Rather than just, I tend to hand something in or complete something, tick a box, and move on to the next box. Right. I don't give myself any time to celebrate the small successes. Mm. And I feel like you're very much, from a well being perspective and from a success perspective, you have more time to appreciate what you've really achieved mm. if you actually take a small half an hour out even if it's just right I've managed to sort out this whole issue um, of our samples being lost or like our fabrics really stained from mm. bad weather or something like that okay I've solved that I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea yeah and have a break for 10 minutes I think celebrating the small successes can really help you build and build mm. and build and, and you almost then Joe said you segregate the steps on the ladder rather than just skip to the top and you don't appreciate anything which has happened in between. So I thought she'd done an amazing talk anyway, but she ended with that and I thought that's really impactful. I really think it is because you can be go, go, go and always feel like you're not doing enough. I think particularly as students, you know, it seems like there, there's so much pressure and I think that you just taking a little bit of a step back to celebrate things is really good and good about lo looking after yourself, but also the fact of where you are now compared to where you were four years ago, you know, understanding how you got there is, is so important. But yeah, even if it's a cup of tea, mm -hmm. really celebrating yourself, I think, and what you've achieved is, is so important. What about in terms of career planning for undergraduates where uh, quite often I get, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it, oh, I'll work it out near a graduation. You're not somebody that did that so much, you were taking opportunity. So what advice would you give to anyone who's thinking that sometimes often what it comes down to while they're putting it off is because they just they feel worried or they just don't know what they want to do so any advice for people who are thinking i'm just going to put it off or that even considering career planning is not important i think really really utilize the time that you have in the mm. summer uh, and right. i mean i finish all of my deadlines and hand in at the end of this month and then i start my master's dissertation right so i have no summer so I think because I have no summer this summer, I think 
what have I actually achieved with my last few summers? And the answer is a lot because I always threw myself out there and I'm not somebody who can sit around and not mm. do anything. So in my second year, I took myself to Ghana mm. um, to do a law internship. Right. This is kind of linked to fashion as well because in the place I was staying, um, there was a seamstress down the road and she always, always looked so stressed because right. she had piles and piles of fabric, all of these dresses to make and no time. So I do my day in the law firm and it would often end early um, because I don't know where to start with law in Ghana, it's all over the place. Okay. So we'd travel around all the time, we'd go to court, nothing would be resolved, it would be put off and off and off. There was one case that was older than I was. Really? <laughs> yes, it had been open for 19 and a half years. Wow. And not resolved. Wow. So that just gives you a little summary of the kind of state of affairs. Yes. So anyway, I had an amazing experience. I was out there for probably a month. Right. Worked with this seamstress as well. I said, oh, I'm quite good at sewing. Do you need some help? And she went, yes, threw these pile of clothes at me. Um, so I sat and helped her a few evenings just to throw myself out there, <laughs> just to do some fashion in Ghana. And she sent me home with lots of lovely African fabric. Wow. So I think doing completely random things in your summer, not completely random, sometimes... So I went to do my law internship, got some fashion experience out of it as well, met some amazing people yeah. who I'm still friends with now. So I think utilising that, because it's almost three months, two, three months in the summer. Yeah. Um, so I understand that people have to work. Yeah. But whether that means you work in a bar one year, you work Camp America the next year, mm. go and do as many different things as you possibly can to kind of know what you like and dislike. Yeah. It might be that you go to Camp America and you think, oh my gosh, I am never working with children again. That's good, because you've crossed something off the yeah. potential list. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or it might be that you work in a bar and you think, oh, I'd love to manage a kind of industry like that. I really want to work in mm. hospitality. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, just get as much experience as you possibly can to like tick and cross and push you in the right direction. Mm. Because with my law work experience, it definitely pushed me against a law career right which isn't particularly a bad thing no I definitely didn't waste weeks of work experience I learned valuable things I learned how so for example um, I spent a week at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in their legal department I really learned that week how to write good emails yeah yeah for example that's a skill that you need yes. forever um, and especially now I, I, how many emails do I write a day hundreds yeah so you need it all the time so I think career planning wise just Tick, not just ticks and crosses and boxes, um, but also it kind of pushes and pulls you in the right direction. I think particularly thinking about your legal experience in Ghana, you that's so, so interesting and something so different. Though, but it's not just about the legal experience. Actually, if you take the law out of it, it's new people, new communities. It's about um, different cultures, different food, being resilient, travelling. Um, and that sewing for uh, for the lady, you just you mentioned earlier about having to sew like the week before fashion exactly. week. Exactly. So they kind of I needed together. to finish a headdress in the Uber on the way to the show in February. <laughs> it's okay because I've got the hand sewing skills. Yeah, exactly. And I think putting yourself out there and recognising that opportunity. How did you come across the Ghana opportunity? I think I found it online. Um, I think, yeah, I think there was a careers fair at uni. And there was this company which was speaking about internships. Mm. And I spoke to them and I said, do you do anything to do with law? Because they did a football, um, you can go and volunteer to be a football coach out there. Sure. Or a netball coach. And that's how I initially approached the company. And they said, yes, we can see if we can get in contact with somebody and organise this for you. Mm. So then I went on their website, saw that they did do law internships in maybe Australia, Vietnam and Ghana. And I was like, I love Africa, I've been before, let's go for it. Great. So just, again, it starts with the career sphere, but just going to and ask questions. Because, mm -hmm. so, you know, there's lots of... Behind every organisation, there's other things. They don't always advertise everything they're doing in one go because it's just overwhelming. So asking questions is so important. Um, OK, so um, good careers advice, which is putting yourself out there, building a portfolio of work, trying stuff that you're not going to like, um, and not leaving it, I suppose, um, is really key. Um, and we've covered such a range of things. I think what, what really stands out is your ability to just keep trying and putting yourself forward, but ultimately finding the passion. And that hasn't come by accident. You've kind of had to work to find that passion, haven't you? Yeah. Um, 
anything final to share with law students um, before we, or any student at the university in regards to career planning or advice for their journey? I think don't take your time here for granted. So yesterday I came down having not been here for almost a year and appreciated walking around the house so much. I know it's beautiful sunshine at the moment, so it's extra, extra good. (laughs) But appreciate what you've got when you're at uni because it's so easy to just exist in your little library bubble and when you're writing your dissertation and not come out, like the people that you meet here are going to be your friends for life. Not just your friends for life, but useful contacts, even if they go and do something completely different. So just utilise the time, the space and the experiences that you've got at at Plymouth. That's that's really good advice. Taking that cup of tea, that walk around the home, whatever (laughs) it is, appreciate it. All right, thank you so much. That is really, really uh, very useful. And um, so this video will be hosted on Gear Sites and on LinkedIn. And you can find both Eleanor and myself on LinkedIn if you want to connect with us. And of course, to ask Eleanor any questions about being a fashion superstar. Um, and um, hopefully you'll come back to visit us and we can talk more. Okay. I'd love to. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you.